but because of the dating methods, they have to push them back beyond the time of Adam. Look what you've got to do to the scriptures when you believe in millions of years. Look what, look what it ends up doing to your theology and your understanding of mankind. It's very, very sad, but you find that belief prevalent with uh, certain theologians. By the way, you know, just recently it's reported that they found uh, in Portugal a skeleton with characteristics of both Neanderthal and modern humans. In other words, they're interbreeding. What does that mean, by the way, if that's true? It means they're all the one race, right? We're all the one kind. Absolutely. In fact, Neanderthal man probably lived back towards the time of the flood and there's a suggestion by one researcher that certain of the characteristics of his skull indicates that he was very old. Uh, not that he was primitive, but grew to a very old age. And you know what's interesting about that? What's interesting is this, the Bible records that people after the flood still live for hundreds of years for a while until we were, uh, where we are today. Well, you know, when we go through all those things, and when I, I talk in any, to any particular group about these things, I'm then asked a question. Well, if this is all true, and, and there's only, only one race, and we all go back to Adam, and, and so on, you can explain the fact we all have, have the same skin color, etc., and the event of the Tower of Babel, and, and so on. Well, what do you believe about interracial marriage? Now, there's an interesting topic. <laughs> So I thought, well, let's uh, bite the bullet and uh, let's deal with interracial marriage. Okay, first of all, what I would say is this. Because there really is only one race, in essence, there's really no such thing as interracial marriage, right? Now, we might talk about intercultural marriage or interpeople group marriage, right? But not interracial marriage, again, because I believe we should get rid of that term races. But the way I teach my children is this. See, I, I believe it's so important that we don't take our ideas to the Bible, but we build our thinking from the Bible. And so that's what I want to do. What's the primary importance of marriage anyway? One of the primary importances. According to Malachi 2.15, why did God make one? Because he sought to one, because he sought a godly offspring from your union. In other words, one of the primary importance of marriage is to produce godly offspring. Now, how do you do that? Well, you know... The Bible tells us that in marriage you become one, one physically and one spiritually because we're one flesh. Well, the only way to do that is if you obey 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, which says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? In other words, as far as marriage is concerned, the Bible makes it very clear that a Christian should marry a Christian. I mean, that's just uh, absolutely foundational. That's why I, I get so upset today when I see so many young people in our churches who will date non-Christians and say, oh, I'll trust, you know, my, my uh, wife or, or my husband will become a Christian after we're married and I'm praying that they will. You play with fire, you get your fingers burnt. I mean, there may be exceptions where that happens, but it's not the rule, by the way. And that still, even if you, your partner became a Christian after you're married, it still doesn't take away from the fact that it was wrong to do that in the first place. Because the Bible makes it very clear, be not unequally yoked. In fact, I've got a question for you. According to the Bible, not your opinion, according to the Bible only, which impending marriage does God counsel against? A Christian man with dark skin and a Christian woman with light skin or a non-Christian man with, say, middle brown skin and a non-Christian woman with light skin or a non-Christian uh, light-skinned man and a, and a Christian uh, light-skinned uh, woman? You know, the only one that the Bible counsels against is the non-Christian and the Christian. That's the only one. The Bible counts here. It doesn't talk about someone of dark skin and, and light skin and almond eye and, and so on. It's talking about the fact that what marriage is all about. In fact, I do believe there is such a thing as interracial marriage. Do you know what I call uh, real interracial marriage? Uh, when a child of the last Adam 
marries a child of the first Adam. In other words, a regenerate child of the last Adam marries an unregenerate child of the first Adam. When a Christian marries a non-Christian, that's real interracial marriage. And that's the interracial marriage that the Bible clearly speaks against. But I always counsel people at the same time, something else that's very, very important here. You see, because of the Tower of Babel, when people split up and went to different places all over the world, they developed different cultures. And because of the different languages and so on, people from different cultures can think in a totally different way. And so I would always say to somebody, if you're from a different culture to, to your partner, if you want to marry someone from a different culture, a totally different culture, then I need to, to talk to you about the fact that you may have problems in communication because you may not think the same way. Uh, I know a, a person who's married, an uh, American, who married a Japanese lady. They're, they're both Christians and a wonderful couple. But, but he said they, they still have problems in communication sometimes because they come from totally different cultures. And so we need to understand that. And we, I would make sure I counsel people about that because, you know, there are many marriages failed because someone married someone else from a different culture and they weren't able to communicate in marriage. So it's very important that, uh, that you think about that very carefully. And certain mixes can, can have a cultural stigma in, in, in a certain culture and in, in different mixes, you know, there's a problem in, in another culture and the same for the children. Although ultimately it comes down, it's between you and the Lord. And if your, your mates are Christian and you're a Christian and you believe that God's called you to get married and you obey the biblical principle of marriage, then there's, there's nothing that uh, I would point to in the Bible that says that you can't do that, not at all. You know, one of the sad things, I see people, and I see this in America a bit, where I, I find parents who are more concerned that their child not marry someone from a so-called different race than whether the person they're marrying is a Christian or not. And that tells you there's something very basically wrong uh, right there. You know, when you think about it, if uh, someone who uh, is of Chinese descent, say, whose parents were, were born and bred in China, but they come to America, and, and so the child is born in America. They look Chinese with the physical characteristics, but they're brought up as American uh, in, in American culture. Then what are they? <laughs> right? Think about that. Uh, American, in, in, in essence, in their, in their way of thinking, right? So, you see, again, we need to think about these things biblically. Of course, people say to me, wait a minute. If, if, even in the Bible, the Israelites were told not to marry people from other cultures. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. That is true, but why? What was the reason given not to marry people from other cultures? because they were pagans, because <laughs> they didn't worship the true God. And, and that was one of the things that kept happening to the Israelites, marrying people, marrying people uh, fr from a different culture who didn't worship the true God, and then it destroyed them, didn't it? because it brought their, their idol worship into that particular culture.